Some big changes ahead for Gallery 210. We'll have that story next on City Corner. Hi, I'm Steve Potter and welcome to City Corner. Gallery 210 is one of my favorite exhibition places at the University of Missouri St. Louis and Terry Suri has been running that place for a long time and we have a reason for <laughs> inviting him to be here today. Hi Terry, how are you? Hello Steve, good to see you. Good to see you again, right? Yes sir. You know, I was trying to remember and I, I, I don't expect you to remember how many times, I, I'm sure you've been on the show with me before, you've been on, on St. Louis Public Radio with me before. We've, we've done a number of interviews over the years, I think. Uh, we have, we have. I've always appreciated your interest and support of Gallery 210. Made a big difference in how the program was successful. Oh, I don't know about that, but uh, I think you're the reason for that. And I wanna say right up the top, uh, I had a special reason for inviting you here today. And that's because you have decided to retire. First, congratulations. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's time for me to step away. Oh, who says so? Uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> have you been there? Are my notes right? Because they're not always. But have you been there since 1996? Yes, sir. You Have you been the director of Gallery 210 since 1996? I have. You may remember when the gallery was over in the Lucas Hall in that little classroom space before we moved over to the uh, new uh, location there, the Two Hill. I was there for seven or eight years in that building before we made the wow. move and set it up. That was just a little bit before my time at St. Louis Public Radio, so I didn't know about that. Yeah. But you know one thing I've always loved about Gallery 210, I mean, it's kind of a new building, uh, you know, design-wise, but I love the location. I don't know if this means anything to you or if this was in the design, but the fact that it's at a Metrolink stop, for some reason that makes it kind of special to me. Well, it's just serendipitous. The building at least belonged to the... Uh, AT&T, it was a special arrangement where AT&T had to uh, put some money into university campuses as a uh, punishment for some, some reason. And they put these uh, media centers all over the uh, Midwest. Uh, Umsel got one of them. And after the contract ran out, the building was abandoned. And uh, Dean Helton, who was then head of the Art College of Arts, Performing Arts and Communications, um, uh, snagged it for us and asked me if I'd like to have a new space. And I said, certainly. And he said, can you have it ready by January? Uh, and I said, well, yes, of course. So we uh, made a quick pivot out of the Gallery 210 space in Lucas Hall and opened two exhibitions in January. Uh, how, big a deal, how big a deal was that for the gallery moving to that new location? And how did it change things? It was an enormous deal. First of all, it put us where we had easy access to the public. It expanded the space so I could have two consecutive exhibitions going on, which meant if I had to close a show, there was always an exhibition up and running for the public. We had storage area, we had preparation area, we had a reception area, and we had a really nice auditorium. So everything was rolled into a nice little package there. It was, it was, it was just, it's just a perfect space for the kind of work I like to do. Uh -huh. And Terry, how much control as director do you have, or did you have, over the kind of exhibitions there, you know, I don't know if that's a group decision or if you got to call the shots, how does that work? Well, I have a board and I always would discuss the programming with the Gallery 210 board. And uh, they were gracious enough to give me a great deal of latitude in, 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 in uh, putting together the programs. But without their guidance and their support, uh, the programs would have looked different. So they, they uh, encouraged, actually they gave me courage to do things I was sometimes reluctant to do. <laughs> Any regrets looking back that you care to uh, admit? No, no, Steve, I've, I've had the absolute best career at Gallery 210 and UMSL. Uh, the arts community in St. Louis has been supportive. I've had great colleagues in the university basically let me get away with nearly anything I wanted to get away with. So uh, I couldn't be happier. Well, um, I'm happy for you and your new adventure. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But uh, one thing I asked, one reason I asked you to join me was to just acknowledge all your years there. And I'll, I also thought you must have a lot of memories of the different artists and the d different exhibitions. And I think when I first approached you about this, I said, let's talk about your favorite artists. <laughs> um, 
But that was probably, that'd probably be hard to do. <laughs> it, it's impossible to do. Uh, you know, it's like, who's your favorite child? Um, but, 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 but there are some artists who's, you know, whose work that you encounter uh, is, affects you and affects your community strongly. And, uh, and, and those are the ones that, you know, I think we both kind of mentioned when we were going back and forth preparing for the interview. Well, let me just throw some things out to you. And you can just tell me your memories and your thoughts about this. I, we're going to start. We have some specific artists we're going to mention uh, in a little bit. But there are a couple of exhibitions, I think, that uh, have stuck in your mind. And I actually think we did a TV show about this one right here at the station, Taking It to the Streets. What do you remember about that? And when was that? Well, uh, I, I can't remember the exact time on it. I think it was 2000. That's okay. close enough. Close I, I, enough. I can't remember. I can't remember. Um, you can maybe fix that later. But but that exhibition is 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 a direct result of my um, of of the uh, Ferguson uh, troubles when Michael Brown was murdered. Um, I had been showing, and I think you probably remember this. The programming I had been doing was really aimed at, uh, I think, very progressive, somewhat esoteric uh, conceptual work, which, which is what I love. And, and it was a studio practice I had many years ago. And that's where I felt most comfortable. But, but after, after the Michael Brown killing, um, my board and I sat down and we started to realize that as wonderful as the programming is and as, as, as nice as it is, is to have the arts community embrace it, it, how relevant is it to the communities that we serve and are adjacent to? So the programming took a shift to, to at least including uh, exhibitions that would address topics of social justice, equality, um, um, injustice, and that started really driving the, the nature of the programming going forward. And taking it to the street is a direct, re, direct result of that exhibition, of, of, of that change in the galleries of, of programming philosophy. Yeah, that was so powerful. I think that's one thing about art. Art's a lot of things, but it can really, it can really say something about the, the, the lives we lead and the, the, you know, the environment we're living in as far as that goes. And of course, University of Missouri St. Louis borders right on Ferguson, Stone's Throw, uh, right. where Michael Brown was killed. So it just, it was really, it, that was a personal exhibition, I think, for a lot of people. It, it really was. And I think it's important, you know, to be relevant to our communities. Um, I think it's easy for us to get kind of into the ivory tower and, and become divorced from the lives that other people are living. And it's, we need to engage more meaningfully in that. And uh, you know, you ask, what can I do? And this was something that I could do. Hmm. Another uh, unique exhibition that uh, that you remember fondly is something called Task. Uh, yes, Oliver Herring. Oliver Herring Task. Oliver Herring is a wonderful uh, internationally known artist. He resides in Brooklyn, but he travels the world. He's known for his knitted pieces and photography and, and performance videos. And he has this project he does all over the world called Task. And uh, this came to me via university galleries out of normal Illinois, Illinois State University, through my good friend, Barry Blenderman. Uh, Barry asked me if I'd like to host a task party. They had done one in um, normal and, and I jumped at it immediately. So it works like this. Um, Oliver has you assemble as many art materials or any kind of material as you can. You put it into a room and it's stacked up in different areas and there's a, there's a table. And on the table, there's a box that says task box. And you reach into the box and you pull out and it'll have a task for you to do. And one that comes to mind right now is draw the last piece of food you had. So you would go to the gallery wall and you had there's materials to build, um, to draw with, and you would draw on the gallery wall, the last piece of food you had. Or it can be other stuff like build a fort and defend it against all comers. And it was just this delightful, wonderful party. We had, we had an arch built and the arch had to be attacked and torn down. There was all this game playing. And, and in the picture, you can see the debris that's, that's left over and scattered around there. It was, a, it was just the most fun. We probably had 300 people in the night running back and forth between gallery A and gallery B participating in that. Wow. And after that, then uh, um, 
Oliver loaned us some of his figurative works, his large figurative works that he makes from cut out photographs. And they kind of inhabited those two spaces. It, it was great fun. We had Oliver around for about a week or so to do that. And then he came back for the opening reception. That was, that was great fun. I remember that was 2011. That, that one sticks in my mind. Well, you know, things have changed, I think, a, a little bit. Terry, you remember the days when you went to see an art exhibition and you just walked down the hall and, <laughs> and looked at something framed? <laughs> uh, it, it's a memory. I actually remember those things. <laughs> uh, but, um, but I think, you know, these days uh, with young artists, the young transmedia artists, things are more interactive and more uh, um, requiring the person to participate in a way and find their own meaning within it. This can be traced back to the happenings of the 60s and other events in conceptual art and performance art. But this is, this was such a joyful event with Oliver. I, uh, if you have a chance, any, and I say to anybody, have a chance to attend a task party, go. It, it's, it is, it's the happiest time you're going to have. Terry, I'm just curious, because I, I don't know the answer to this. I would think to be in to art as much as you, you must be an, art, an artist of some kind, are you? Well, I have an MFA in painting, and for a number of years, I did keep a studio, and I did make paintings and other mixed media work. But um, after I received a promotion at the Illinois State Museum to associate curator, my duties expanded. And frankly, Steve, um, I am much better at being a curator than I am at being an artist. Well, I gotta be curious. Uh, we're gonna take a break here in just a second, but now that you're retiring, I guess what, they're just gonna shut the doors, no more Gallery 210, right? Oh, no, no, no. There are great things coming for Gallery 210. Uh, Dr. Quigley has been cooking up some wonderful projects coming up. You're talking about uh, Maureen Quigley, and we're yes. going to uh, have her join us for a few minutes coming up in, in the next segment. Do you have any retirement plans yet? Well, I, I have a good friend who has done well. He has a place up in Maine. So my first retirement plan is to grab my fly rod and head up to Maine and do some fishing. All right. That sounds good. Hang on there. We're going to come back and do more with Terry uh, Surrey and Gallery 210 and what the future holds right after this on City Corner. story of a boy who didn't talk for a long time. The boy liked things to always be the same. Any changes would scare and upset him. The unknown was an unfriendly place. The boy was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. He wasn't trying to be mean, it just made him feel uncomfortable. Sometimes he would flap his arms again and again. One day I found out I have something called autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I found my voice and learned all the ways I could live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Missouri Botanical Garden is loved by green thumbs and non-gardening types alike because you can play. You can relax. 
there's always something new to experience, no matter the time of day or the season. And learn about conservation in one-of-a-kind plants. So come and experience St. Louis. Operation Wonder Park is a go! There's nothing more powerful than imagination. But don't just imagine, use STEM to change the world. Who's with me? Tomorrow. If she can stem, so can you. Find out more at She Can Stem. It takes less than one minute to find out if you may have prediabetes, and you can do it here. So what are you waiting for? Just go to the site. There's so many reasons to love St. Louis, you can't pick just one. What I love about St. Louis is the 79 unique neighborhoods and 108 beautiful city parks, including Forest Park, which is actually larger than Central Park in New York, and the gorgeous Tower Grove Park right here. And there's always something new to experience, no matter the time of day or the season. So come and experience St. Louis. I'm Steve Potter. Welcome back to City Corner. We've been talking to Terry Surrey, who is retiring after more than a couple of decades. I'm just rubbing that in. Terry as director of Gallery 210 at the University of Missouri St. Louis. And we want to welcome Dr. Maureen Quigley with us now. Uh, Dr. Quigley, I hope I have your um, title right. You're the chair of the Department of Art and Design. That is correct, Steve. Thank you for inviting us today. Very good. I, I tell you what, tell me the truth. Has Terry been kind of hard to control over these oh, years? It's been a nightmare. It's absolutely been <laughs> awful. Um, couldn't get rid of him soon enough, which is all a lie. Um, he's such a treasure and it's really, it's, it's painful and I'm really excited for him. I think this is, uh, I've already heard about the fly fishing and uh, future projects and I'm, I'm really excited for him and I'm a lot less excited for us except for the new directions. It's always a opportunity to move forward. Well, that's why you're here. I'm gonna to let you expand on that just a little bit. Uh, Terry, but what about you? I know you're going fishing and everything, but has anyone asked you maybe, I don't know, to come to a meeting once in a while or be a consultant or are you just gone for good? Oh, no, no. My intention is to stay involved in the St. Louis art scene. I'd love to keep curating love to do studio visits, serve on panels. I'm available. And uh, this, this community has given a lot to me and it now's a chance for me to give back to them. Uh -huh. Well, Dr. Quigley, you've got his phone number, right? Oh boy, do I, do very fast <laughs> text fingers. Yeah. Um, uh, Dr. Quigley, would you just maybe talk a little bit about your impressions of, and I don't know if you've been around as long as Terry has there, but for however long you've been around, of what Terry's influence as sort of meant for Gallery 210? So I joined, um, I've been department chair and now I'm in my seventh year. And so I basically have known Terry during this time um, when the gallery has moved in this direction that's more focused on uh, social practice and community-based arts and, um, you know, developing the, and, and I, I guess it's that nice entrepreneurial word, incubating local, uh, regional, national artists. And his, um, if you walk down the street on a first Friday and you kind of drop Terry Surrey's name, if you're going down in uh, Grand Center for those first Fridays, people know who he is because I think the artists, the curators, several of the curators locally have passed through UMSL's uh, programming and he's just been so important as, as part of a, a leader of our community. Okay, I've got a two-part question then. Let me start with you, start with you Terry. You're, you're leaving and everything from the full-time position, but do you have any visions for Gallery 210 or things that you would like to see happen or change? I'll let you answer that. And Dr. Quigley, when he's done, why don't you throw your perspective into that question? Sure. Well, I think the gallery has to evolve. It, it changed a great deal during my tenure. And I think Maureen mentioned it here, uh, both social engagement, social practice, and collaborative projects with the communities. Museum work and gallery work is uh, philosophically and culturally and um, ethically moving towards greater community engagement with um, institutions and the people they're supposed to serve. UMSL's uniquely positioned to hit all of those marks. 
And I'm hoping and expecting that the gallery will continue to evolve in that direction. And, and Dr. Quigley, take it from there. I think, so UMSL's mission involves community engagement, but I think what Gallery 210 has the opportunity to do in a, in a really, in a real way is seek community input. I think the, the gallery as it goes forward, you know, Terry mentioned this kind of, there, the, there's an opportunity to be very esoteric on a college campus, to really just be very inward gazing and speak only to students and only to, you know, I guess academic world. But really, I think this is an opportunity to move forward with new visions. What is art? Art in the 21st century is not the same as art in the 20th century which is not the same as art prior to that time. So I'm an art historian, but you have to look towards the future. And that might be materials or practices or the voices, Who who's the voice of the artist. And I think Gallery 210 as a, it's dedicated to contemporary practice. And that's more broad than like you were saying earlier, a painting on a wall. Uh -huh. Terry, what would you, uh, in just a short answer, uh, as you're going out the door, what, what, do you have any advice for Dr. Quigley or whoever follows you? Trust the artist. I've always given the artist a lot of latitude and let them tell me where they want to go. And when I take a hands-off approach to working with artists, I've always got the best results. And Dr. Quigley, do you have any final words for Terry? I, well, I have never, I will never have final words for Terry because there will always be a patio in our future, but I'm so excited for him. I'm excited for the directions we're heading and he will always be a voice uh, in my ear and in anyone's ear who's going forward. Well, Dr. Maureen Quigley, thank you for helping us pay tribute to Terry and Gallery 210 and we can't wait to see what happens with the gallery in the future. Thank, thank you so much for Very your time. Much. Thank you so much. Um, Terry, we're back with you. And in the time we have uh, remaining, I want to just ask you about a couple of artists I know that have stuck in your mind over time and you can just give your thoughts. Uh, one was Sarah Frost. Tell us about her. Well, Sarah Frost is, um, I think one of the real treasures of our region. She's best known for her keyboard or QWERTY pieces. And she approached me with a project that was completely outside of her usual studio practice. It was to build this large bamboo wall that cut the gallery in half. And originally she was gonna cover the floor in a quilt, a carpeted a quilt, you know, it was gonna be this nice soft surface. And then she changed her mind. She wanted dirt in there so she could have footprints of the people who would come in and go. So we moved in nine yards of dirt and built this wall across the gallery. And it was so beautifully lit by the artist. It was just a spectacle. She worked hard and it, it was one of those things where you have to go in, you have to engage the piece, you have to walk through it. Um, I, you know, a more generous person in terms of her time and effort would be hard to find. Huh. Uh, there's another artist I want to ask you about because it's someone I kind of used to know from here, STL TV. This was many years ago, and I don't even remember exactly what he did here because it was behind the scenes. Uh, Zlatko Kosick. Oh, and... Zlatko. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, um, I was kind of in between, um, you know, doing the more uh, esoteric work and more... Um, I was moving towards more community and, and socially, uh, um, social justice work. And I came across a number of Zlatko's videos. And I was interested, because I've always kind of been, had an interest in new types of media, of how could the gallery become engaged with video and filmmaking art? And I'd seen Zlatko's work around and I approached him. And what happened is it became kind of a, a summation of his career up to that point. And he put together an absolutely brilliant selection of his videos that were quite immersive. You would walk through the gallery, it would be addressing very much his biography. Some of the stories are tragic and horrible. Some of them are absolutely hilarious. But, um, but if you wanna have a really good time over beers and storytelling, <laughs> Zlatko is your man. He, he is, uh, that, was, that was some of the most fun I had putting together an exhibition. And I'm, I'm really delighted to say that we, we have remained close friends. In fact, 
when the gallery had to go virtual this fall to accommodate the COVID, he was the man who set up the virtual gallery for 210. Yeah, he does some impressive stuff. Real quickly, tell me about B. Nettles. Ah, uh, B. God, I love B. I've known B. Nettles since uh, I was at the Illinois State Museum, so I have known B for over 30 years. She is undoubtedly one of America's greatest photographers. You may have seen her major retrospective at the Sheldon a, a couple of years ago that was organized by Olivia gonzalez Lars. Um, I first met B when she was doing her mother's journal series and uh, put together uh, uh, as part of a group show. Uh, she was part of a group show called Illinois Photographers. Then she asked me and the Illinois State Museum to be the uh, producer and curate her mother's journal exhibition, which was such an honor. We did that exhibition. And after I moved to North Carolina, that exhibition traveled with me to out there and it was so well received. And she is such a great teacher. She spends a lot of time out at Penland there. So when she would come out from Penland, I would be from Boone, North Carolina. We meet in Penland and we, we had the best time. When I came back to St. Louis, I was really wanting to bring B back with me because she hadn't been seen in the city before. And that really surprised me. So B had a new series of work uh, called Return Trips. And I was able to present that new body of work for the first time here in St. Louis. Terry, we don't have a whole lot of time left, but I know there was one uh, thing that I wanted to ask you about, and that's something you call the Exposure Series. Right, right. Um, the Exposure Series, I think Maureen mentioned, is kind of an incubator for artists. It, it's, it's, a, it's a theme to show that the gallery uh, has been presenting for at least 17 years. It used to be out of the um, Webster University's Hunt Gallery, and we took it over in 2004 when we moved to the new space. And it was, it was a chance for me to work through certain thematic ideas, working with local artists. Um, somebody like, um, you know, let's say one, one of the exhibitions from the, that, that I like uh, is the called Notions of the Grotesque. I had that with Edo Rosenblith and uh, Travis Lawrence. Uh, they were featured in that. The recent one called Three Myths, Three Women Artists featured uh, three women looking at addressing the various myths that surround femininity and sexuality. Um, and, and those were um, those were so much fun to do because they got to go to the studio with us. The artists got to talk to each other. And uh, I, I think some of the, some of my best publications came from that series of exhibitions. Well, Terry, we just hit the tip of the iceberg. I know for all your fond memories, I just want to thank you here. And I hope people will, if they haven't been to Gallery 210, they check it out in the not too distant future. And I just want to say it's been a pleasure getting to know you this past however many years it's been. And I wish you the best in fishing and consulting. And I know we'll probably see a Gallery 210 in a hall or something once in a while. Uh, you can count on that. Thanks, Steve, for all your support through the years. So I've made a big difference. Thank you, Terry. Terry Surrey, uh, Director of Gallery 210, who's now retiring. I'm Steve Potter, and that's all the time we have for this part of City Corner. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.